Welcome back here to our second video that covers how, how to process, how to analyze and how to uh, report NMR data. Here's the spectrum as we left it more or less, the full overview spectrum with the peak picking, the integration and we also looked at the coupling constants, however at the moment we don't see the actual coupling constants and we also automated uh, or produced a report by the computer. I think I warned you already in the first video that you need to be a little bit careful about this report because it's really only taking the data we put in and um, sometimes this can g give wrong information. It saves you a lot of typing and uh, avoids lots of tiny little errors but please never rely on this automatized um, report. So whenever it comes to writing up a lab report or a thesis you need to work with this data first. So how do we do this? First of all, we still don't really know the coupling constant. We just see that there are different peak patterns. Uh, we know the chemical shift of those, but we don't know the coupling constant. So how do we do this? First of all, I want to open another uh, panel here, the panel that's called Multiple Manager. And then I want to zoom. Let's say we just take some of those signals, let's ah, start with one signal, the signal number A, where we know it's a DD system, and we know the chemical shift, and we know it corresponds to one proton. If we look into this window here to the left in the multiple manager, then we see exact this data. 5.442 is the chemical shift, DD we know as well, and one proton is given here as well. However, now we get also the information about the coupling constant, 3.4 and 1.2. So 3.4 is a coupling constant from here to there, or from here to there, while the coupling constant of 1.2 comes from this distance from here to there, and from here to there. Really check that there is no coupling constant between this peak and this peak, and this peak and that peak. If you struggle with this information, then please go back into the uh, information sheet on Blackboard about how coupling constants are coming about. So here we see everything. If we click on this arrow here, we can go from one signal to the next one. So here we have a triplet, we are happy with that one, a DD system, another doublet, and here we come to something where I told you it is a multiplet. And I was happy f for my first analysis for this one. However, I can clearly see these are two protons and the signal doesn't look too wild that I really want to accept it as a uh, multiplet. So what can I do about this one? For this purpose, I need to basically look at the different coupling constants I find in all my different signals. And I've done this already for you. If we can click quickly through. If we look at the different coupling constant, then we find here something with 3.4, 1.2, we mentioned it. Here's something about 10, another one with 10, 10 again, then the multiplet, and here 6.6 .6 and 1.2. The 1.2 we have seen, it was the first signal I've shown, shown you, here, 1.2. So this means the signal around 5.4 belongs somehow to the signal at 3.9. The 6.6 .6 we haven't seen. Then all these 10 signals, they obviously also belong somehow to each other, so they must be in vicinity. But the 6.6 .6 we haven't found yet. So what can we do? For this purpose, I would like to analyze this multiplet signal. The computer is not able to do much more with it at the moment, but we can actually do more with it. First of all, we look at these two icons. This left icon here adds peaks. At the moment, the all peaks have been picked, so I'm not taking anything more. This icon here removes peak. So what I'm going to do is now, I'm removing most of the peaks. Six, to be sure. And then I look at the value. What I see here, I get a value of 6.7, which is very close to the 6.6 um, .6 I had on the uh, other signal, which is just here to the right. 
So if I now add peaks again, so I'm now having four peaks, but now I'm back to my multiplet. So, but I now remove those two peaks. Look at the coupling constant. Now I get 6.6. .6. So I continue this game and I add a signal and actually we can now see that the distance between this peak and this peak, and this peak and this peak is actually quite similar. So 6.5. Let's add a couple of more peaks. But now I have to remove all the number of those. Ah. And this one as well. So look at the coupling constant here. Now we have again 6.5. So this means the, these two protons are somehow in vicinity, the vicinal protons, to this signal we find here at 3.92. However, it's, these are DD systems. So there are two signals that are very close to each other. One comes in from that side and one comes in from that side. And it happens to be that one of those needles, one of those peaks, are happening to be exactly on top of each other. So we have one DD system with those four peaks and the other DD system has one, two, three, four peaks over here. So one coupling constant we have found so far is about 6.6. .6. That's the average between all those big coupling constants. But there must be also a second coupling constant. The second coupling constant is between this peak and this peak, between this peak and this peak. Again, if you are not sure why I can do this, please look back into the information about how to get information about coupling constants. So what I'm doing now, I'm adding a couple of peaks here, at this one and at this one, and remove that one here, remove this one, and remove this peak if I can. Did it allow me to remove it? No, still not. So now we can see that we have a coupling constant the computer can't calculate. And that's the reason why we always got this stupid multiplet here so it didn't really recognize what's happening here. So from here to there the computer somehow can't calculate it. But if you just look at it or would use a ruler, you would realize that this distance is very similar between the distance from here to there. So let us t try out those peaks. Look at the t coupling constant. Now we have a coupling constant of 11.3. I know that this is a coupling constant we normally see between geminal protons, so protons that are sitting on the same carbon atom. So I would like to add a couple of more. I take it from here to there and have to remove a couple of signals. Look at the coupling constant. From here to there 11.3 again. So now we need a little bit of luck. I try to select this peak and this peak here. I'll remove two of my peaks again. This peak and this peak. I look at the coupling constant, 11.2. So basically we have found the uh, coupling constant for two signals here. So what we know by now is that here we have one DD system and here we have another DD system. And this will require that we now manually change the signal. So there are different ways in doing it. First of all, we can pick the uh, signals we want to, but we know already that this doesn't really work very well. Um, we can define, change the class of a signal, DD signal, and can put in the peaks where we know that they're there. So do we have all four here? So this one here, I know it's a DD system. I can force it, but the system is not really able to put the coupling constants in. I can try to type them in here, but the system never really takes it, even if I put click here on report. So now it's really high time to learn how to modify 
the computer generated report. Okay, here yeah, I'm back. I have cleaned up the spectrum a little bit because we had too many things in. So I'm back at the stage where we have all the signals. We have still have the wrong report and I want to now sort out this report. I just said that we have to do something about our multiplet and we, that we know that's basically two DD systems. How can we get this one in a really nice way? First of all, I will zoom in this signal so that we see it a little bit better. So here we have it. And the very first thing that I will do is now I will remove my wrong multiplet. I can do this by right mouse clicking and say delete multiplet and then this one is gone. I still would like to see my manager here to the side so I go here to the panels and select the multiplet manager again. So since I know I have two signals I will start to identify them as two signals. So I need to press J again and we'll just select this signal with the whole thing in and I will establish a second signal again with a long tall peak in. At the moment you see multiple here, double here, obviously wrong but we don't bother too much about it for the moment. So E and L. So let's go to signal E. We have already the required four peaks in so we are pretty happy about that one. What can we do? I'm now selecting something here that's called measure coupling constant. If I do this one I should hopefully get a blue line. So I go from the left top here to the next peak where I expect my 6.6 .6 roughly, my coupling constant, and you can see it comes here at 6.7 in. And it's also turning up now as a blue color. That's good. I know that the other coupling constant starts again from here and goes over to this signal and it should be around 11.2, 11.3. So now we can see that this one is in. It recognizes now automatically as a DD system, so that's pretty nice. So here we are happy with the signal. We have everything in. Signal L we need to change, so we have to scroll until we go forward until we are at signal L. And this one needs to be changed as well. Um, we need the coupling constants in. So this we do exactly in the same way as before. So we measure from this peak to that one, 6.5, that's fine. And this has already recognized the um, um, other coupling constant of 11.3. So that's great. The signal should be somewhere here 4.08, 4.07. It has shifted this a little bit. We know it should be 4.8 can try to write this in but it doesn't allow us. So there will be a small aberration but everything else is fine. Then I show you one other trick. If we click on this button here then we see the signal, we see it's slightly shifted out. It should move over here. We can also go back to our signal E. can do the same thing and you can see we have the other DD system. We can give this one a different color so that we can clear distinguish between those two peaks. So they're slightly shifted out here, but we know basically where the center of the peak is. The good thing is now, now we can use a re report button here. So now we get a new report. And we compare this one with the first report. Oops. Ah, one other wonderful thing I would like to show you. If we do a right click somewhere on the spectrum, go for properties, we can go for multiplets, say show J tree. And you can see here you, we get this beautiful J tree so we don't have to draw them ours, uh, ourselves. So now we want to change the report. I have two reports. This one here was a crappy one. That one I will remove, just delete that one. So this is a report I want to have and I know there were some tiny little things I have to change. If I now go and have a look at the full spectrum then I should be able to zoom in again to this signal and should find the middle of this one here that one would be 4.11 
can check what this one is suggesting. 4.13, that's definitely wrong. And the other one should be at 4.08. So now we have to manually modify this one here. So this works by just clicking into the box. We change this one here to 4.11 and the other signal to 4.08. So now we have a well correctly reported spectrum. You can just check, compare with the full spectrum. So we make an overview here. Overview spectrum, zoom a little bit too messy here. So we can see first of all all the wonderful trees which is quite convenient and we can also see the peak picking so we can convince ourselves that everything goes correctly here so this one should be in the middle 4.42 fine a DD system yeah we see this one the coupling constants seem to be right um, one proton is also fine um, then we can go to the next one. It looks at a triplet. This is actually a DD system that appears as a triplet, but we can leave this one as it is. It's 10 hertz. Then we have the next one at 5.01, which again corresponds to one proton here. You see it rounds automatically. If you get fractions, then you have to normalize your spectrum, but normally that works well. Then we have again 10 Hertz and another 10 Hertz here so we have now redundant coupling constants we, which we could take out so that's the very last thing we are doing but I prefer normally not to do this on my spectrum I prefer to do this in uh, Word for example and then here we have all our singlets where we don't have any coupling constants so, so far we are happy now. We have now a good report. We haven't really annotated the spectrum. I think that's the very last thing I will do um, before I go and finalize my list here in a Word document.